Welcome traders to another Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing Monday the 25th of July with me Patrick Munnerly. Okay let's jump into the data for the week starting in the US. Monday we get uh, June Chicago Fed Activity Index. <clears throat> Conditions have weakened materially across the US as evidenced by deteriorating regional surveys because we'll also get the uh, July Dallas Fed Index. Last time we got a negative 17.7 actually looking for a negative 22 print this time. Heading into Tuesday, May FHFA house prices, 1.6% uh, versus 1.6% last time out. Price momentum is set to slow, obviously, as rate hikes start to take effect. We also get May S&P CS home price index, looking for a 1.6% print there. July consumer confidence index, uh, last time 98.7, looking for a 96.4. Inflation concerns are starting to weigh on uh, consumer confidence. We also get the July uh, Richmond Fed Index looking for a negative 14. Manufacturing outlook clouded by labour and material shortages. We round out Tuesday with new home sales looking for a negative 3.4% versus the positive 10.7% last time as sales weakening on construction headwinds and affordability. Heading into Wednesday, key day really, we get June wholesale inventories. Inventory levels vary considerably across the economy at the moment. We also get durable goods orders, looking for a negative 0.5% print there. Businesses are still battling supply issues. And then we get June home sales pending. Uh, demand is cooling amid these higher rates. And then talking about rates, we also get the all-important FOMC policy decision. Uh, looking for a 75 basis point hike, which appears to be pretty well telegraphed now. That would uh, take rates to 2.375% in the US. The real focus is going to be on the uh, the risks around the uh, economic improvements in the coming quarters. Then heading into Thursday, we get Q2 GDP annualized in the US gross domestic product. Last time, negative 1.6%, looking for a positive 0.5% print here. A second consecutive negative quarter could be in the cards, though, as some market participants are pricing in a negative 0.5% print for Thursday. We also get initial jobless claims. They're starting to creep up a bit. Uh, 251k last week, so keeping a close eye on those as they are just drifting higher now from those historic lows. We also get the July Kansas City Fed Index uh, manufacturing again, looking increasingly fragile. And then rounding out the week next week in the US, we get the uh, Employment Cost Index, looking for a 1.1% break there, tight labor market supporting Robust wage growth. We also get June personal income looking for a 0.5% there as purchasing power is an ongoing concern as households, it, households start to run down their savings. Uh, June personal spending should come in around 0.8%. And then we get the June PC deflator last time 0.6%, looking for a 0.9% print, uh, PCE inflation consolidating at high levels, but as many are hoping it should uh, gradually fall as price pressures abate in the second half of 2022. We also get July Chicago PMI looking for 56.2 there. Supply issues, again, an ongoing concern. We ran out the week with University of Michigan sentiment looking for a 51.1% 51.1 print there. That's the final inflation concerns obviously weighing heavily on sentiment. So from a technical perspective, the dollar index pulled back Continues to pull back from that 108.70 uh, resistance zone that we highlighted a couple of weeks ago. So we're now looking for a three-wave corrective move to ideally test into this 105.50 ascending trend line support. From there, we watch for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side, targeting move up for the next upside objective at uh, 110. From there, once again, we're watching for bearish reversal patterns to re-engage on the short side, looking for another leg, a uh, more protracted pullback into that weekly 104 test uh, is what I am eyeing. At this stage, it would take a closing breach of this trend line support at the 105.50 to suggest a potential for more meaningful high in place. And then certainly we'd be looking at 104 and potentially back into the base there at 101.20s. Moving to the Eurozone. In terms of data next week, it's, uh, it's a sparse calendar. 
Thursday, we get July economic confidence, looking for a 101 versus a 104 last time out. Inflation and energy security concerns are weighing heavily on European confidence. Consumer confidence is expected to come in weak as well. Then we round out the week with July CPI, year over year, looking for 8.8% inflation pressures are broadening quite notably now. We also get second quarter GDP print, uh, looking for a 0.2%. Growth is stalling and set to continue to stall over the remainder of 2022. And that rounds out the data in terms of the Eurozone next week. So the Euro is likely to take its key from the dollar index and how the dollar responds to the FOMC. I would ideally like to see the Euro make a new low next week, trading into the one, uh, sorry, the 9897 area. If that sets up, I'm going to be watching for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side, looking for a move back into that 103.50. At this stage, it would take a close through 104.50 to suggest that we do actually have a more meaningful low in place here, and then we'd be looking for a move up to test the next resistance zone up to 107.75. In the UK, obviously, we have the ongoing political drama around who will be the next Prime Minister and leader of the Conservative Party, and those debates will start to heat up. In terms of data next week, it's, uh, it's a light calendar, it's focused on the end of the week, Thursday, July and nationwide <coughs> house prices. Uh, demand is continuing to soften as rate hikes take effect, and net mortgage lending uh, also expecting to come in weak as rising rates and a slowing economy will begin to weigh on lending. So from a technical perspective, whilst we hold 121.30, 121.50 as resistance, I'm looking for another leg to the downside and ideally a test into monthly projected range support at that 115 area. From there, I'll be watching for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side, looking for a more meaningful corrective move to play out. Moving to Japan and the dollar yen in focus. In terms of data, only one real uh, point of note next week, and that comes on Friday, with June industrial production, last time negative 7.5%, looking for a positive 4% print, uh, as expected to bounce upon the reopening of the economy and supply, but supply chain issues obviously remain a concern. So from a technical perspective, we've taken out that trend line support. So I'm looking now for a three-way corrective move, certainly 134.70, uh, 134.50 area. And there, watch for bullish reversal patterns, and we've got an upside target into initially looking for a test of 140 on the upside before extending higher again. And down under in Australia, in terms of data next week, we get second quarter CPI looking for a 1.9% print. Uh, some participants pointing towards a 1.7% print. Uh, housing and food and auto fuel are driving the second quarter spike, but widespread price pressures from both domestic and international sources continue to push on core inflation. So looking for an annualized print there of 6.2% and trim mean of 1.5%. And second quarter CBI trimmed mean year over year at 4.7%. Then heading into Thursday, we get uh, June retail sales. Looking for 0.5% print there. Potential for a touch higher at 0.6%. They look to have held up well despite falling consumer sentiment. We also get export price index. Commodity prices moving higher still on supply chops, and that should uh, support some robust growth there. In terms of the import index, looking for a 2% print there, higher global prices, notably from energy, tempered by that higher Aussie dollar. Then we round out the week with uh, June private sector credit, looking for a 0.7%, potential for a 0.6%, uh, growth to ease back after oversized prints for business, uh, significant upward pressure on input prices. Is, uh, is also a concern. So that rounds out the data in Australia from a technical perspective. We're sitting right at that trend line resistance now. Look for a pullback here, and if that pullback can find support into the 68.20s, 68.30s, you still see the potential for an extension up into the high volume node, 71.80s. At this stage, it will take a loss of that 68 level to suggest a more meaningful high in place, and we still have that downside target at 66.40s. We'll just round out uh, this session, taking a quick look at Bitcoin. Still tracking this five-wave sequence. Notable the similarities in terms of the price action here to this section here. 
So whilst we hold that 25,000 level as resistance still, we have a downside objective, 12,185. And again, if we're thinking about this dollar, seeing some strength into the FOMC, and then putting in a potential tradable local high, then this, uh, this could be the move down in terms of Bitcoin, the final washout coinciding with that FOMC meeting, and then we could see a more meaningful uh, move to the upside. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much.